everybody and welcome to another Houdini tutorial. My name is Kate and today we're going to be revisiting a tutorial I think I did over a year ago. Um, maybe two years ago actually. Uh, but it was called Render Passes in Houdini and after all your wonderful feedback I thought I'd redo this tutorial and I think the main criticism of that tutorial was that I created a sim instead of just creating the render passes. So what I've done today is I've created a sim with a fish and we're going to take this fish and we're going to put him into uh, Nuke and I'm going to show you how to render pass all this stuff out for him. And since he's already pre-built, I think we're good to go. So, as you can see, uh, there's a bunch of different elements to this fish in the scene. Uh, a few, there are some issues. Uh, we have kind of warping of the tail and we also have some veins, but I'm not too worried about that as today's kind of result is about, you know, creating render passes rather than creating a fish. Maybe that will be another tutorial in the future. Who knows? <laughs> hint, hint. Um, so, I'm going to choose a frame that I like and then I'm going to render it. I'm not going to render a whole sequence because, again, this build is in progress, but thought you, I thought I'd walk you through how I would go around, you know, rendering something like this that has multiple moving elements. Um, I also have two cameras in the scene. One here and one here. I think I'm gonna go for camera one. Camera one just has a better perspective in my opinion. Um, we have a lot of particles going on and we also have some veins going through the fish and some minor details in the front right there. Um, so we're gonna dive into our output and as you can see we have a default IPR. Uh, so we're gonna multiply this depending on how many elements we have in the scene and in this particular case We have four so we're gonna duplicate it But before we duplicate it what we're gonna do is we're gonna Go through here and we're gonna select some settings and what the setting is going to do um, Is just basically maximize our render with this fish uh, So if we jump over here and we click render we can edit the quality of it already I've changed my pixel samples to six because I thought that would maximize the sampling for this image. I don't, one thing that I see junior artists do when it comes to creating passes for creatures like this is that, or for anything in general, is that they crank up the pixel sample. So I had a student who cranked up their pixel samples to about 87 each and the renders just wouldn't render. So keep your pixel samples low and find another way to fix that issue. I think the fish is also a little bit too bright. So I think I'm gonna just turn down some of the glow. Uh, that's way better. I like that. <laughs> so always keep your pixel samples low. Uh, and I wouldn't really go more than 10 for any kind of big render unless you're doing something production wise. In this particular case we don't have volumes so I'm going to just turn that, that down to zero. And that basically what that's going to do is it's going to tell Houdini there's no volumes in the scene. So if we don't need volume quality turn it off. Uh, do we have reflections and refractions in the scene? We only have reflections so I'm going to go no refraction there's going to be no refraction sampling. Uh, volume step shadow, you can turn that down to zero, we don't need it. Um, so always like think about what you need in your scene and what you don't need in your scene. And if you don't have any volumes in your scene, don't use the volume settings. Uh, I've changed the global quality to two. You can also crank up the min and max samples if you feel like it. In this particular particular case, I don't think we do. And then if we go over to limits, you might notice some refract limits and reflect limits. In this particular case, we don't have any refraction, so we're going to turn that off. Volume limits turned off. That seems pretty good. Seems good over here. And if we go to render, on, rendering, that all looks great. Well, I'll put, um, we'll talk about this just a little bit later. But before we move on, I want to talk about objects. So in this particular area, um, you might notice in candidate objects, there's a little star here. And what that means, it's basically telling Houdini, render everything in the scene. I don't, that's all it's telling Houdini to do. 
So in this particular case, we don't really want it to <laughs> do that. And you can see everything goes away. So what we're going to do is we're going to tell it force these objects. And so we're going to select which objects we want. In this particular case, we want the fish. So it's going to render the fish. And we're going to add a force mat to the veins, the particles, <laughs> and the detail. And we're going to go like that. So there should be, if we go to alpha channel, interesting. We shouldn't see anything because actually the veins are inside the fish, uh, which pretty good. And oh, down here you can also see your RBG channels, which is really, really cool. And you also have the option of applying a LUT onto your Houdini file or your render, just to kind of see how it's going, um, which is I find really, really fascinating. So if you re rename your mantra or your IPR, mantra IPR, let's say we'll call it fish render, what will happen in the images tab is that it will take the name of this nose and it will export it as the name of that EXR. So in this particular case, it's going to say fish render X amount of frames. So that's pretty great. Um, up here, we also have it set on render frame range. In this particular case, I don't want it to, so I'm just going to say render current frame, and then I'm going to press render to disk, and it should do that. But if we go over here, we should, I think we've encountered an error. I've never had that error happen before. Let's go check it out. You know what? It might be a lighting issue. If we go back over to our objects tab, you can also see down here it has all select, selected all the candidate lights. I think we might just need... An environment light. It might be the geo light messing around with everything, but we'll see in a second. Hey, we did it. Okay, so if we go over to my rendering tab, actually, so as you can see here, it's rendering the fish, and you can see the first name of the file contains the name of the file, which in this case is fish, and fish render is the name of the mantra node. So then you're good to go. Everything's labeled as it should. So we want to also keep these similar settings for our next stage of renders, which are the particles and the veins and the detail. So we're going to duplicate this another three times. And we're going to hit L and that's going to stretch out all our nodes. So I'm going to change this from fish render to particle render. This one's going to be for the veins. And this one's going to be for the detail. And what we're going to do here is we're going to go for, to the detail and we're going to swap out render fish with render detail. And then down here, we're going to go um, render fish, particles, and veins. We're going to put that as the forced mat. The veins, we're going to again swap out the fish with the veins. Particles, detail, fish. And we should be good to go. Um, so I will render those out. They shouldn't take long to render. We just saw the fish wrap up in a matter of seconds. Um, but before we do, I'm going to jump into Nuke. So yay, our renders are done in Nuke, and you can kind of see uh, our fishy here lurking in the background. And we've got our other two kind of passes right there. And I want to go through uh, the alpha channels and other fun stuff like that. So you can kind of see what's happening. So right now, this file only it only contains a R, G, B, and blue channel. Um, and as you can see, there's nothing, nothing in the red channel because everything's blue, but, uh, there's also an alpha channel as well. And the same will go for the other renders over here. And if we combine these together, we can see something cool start to happen. Um, that they kind of just automatically fit together. Um, and the benefit of rendering everything separately is that you can grade them and edit them individually. So if you want something to be brighter, or darker, 
you can do that. And it's a lot more convenient and it, honestly, it saves your amount. It really saves you when it comes to rendering everything because it's honestly faster to create a mat for characters and effects uh, than rendering everything all at once. That's, a, that's something that I even struggle with every single day when I'm in Houdini because my first instinct is to render everything right now. Um, and often you don't want to do that. You want to set up the passes, you want to make sure everything flows together. Um, because this is what happens in a real life VFX production. Everything needs to flow together and needs to fit together. Um, so yeah, that's kind of how you export everything. Let's say if I want to edit a channel such as red, G, B, or blue and nuke. You could go turn off red, turn off green, and suddenly you're only gaining in the blues or the greens. And that's pretty great. And the same goes for the red channel and the green channel and all the other fun stuff that like that. But let's say if you want to edit something other than the alpha channel and the RBG. What can you do? Because suddenly your passes don't contain that information. You can jump back into Houdini. Um, going back over to our fish render node, let's say if we go to rendering. No, we'll go to imaging. I think it's ex under ex extra image planes. So under the extra image planes, you can choose what type of uh, what type of pass you want it. If you want the normal shading depth, position, all that jazz. And you can even add your own custom ones, but you do have to set those up in VEX. So they're very complicated to do. And usually you won't see that. Ha you won't be asked to do that if you're a junior artist. A senior artist will probably set that up pre beforehand if it's for their build or they'll probably show you. So if we render our fish again, uh, start to happen and you can see up here, it's automatically switched over to my fish render because the fish render um, is the first one I made. I think, believe it's also capitalized. So Houdini does a thick cool thing with um, capitalized letters um, and especially for nulls that if you capitalize your null, it will automatically drift to the top of your kind of node tree. So if you're looking for it in a hierarchy, it will automatically be there for you to grab, which is really, really great. Here you can also see the whiteness and brightness contrast as well. And you can adjust that here, things like that. So if we re-render our fish, which I'll do right now, I'll render and finish rendering probably in about 30 seconds. We'll jump back over to Nuke and I'll turn off this grade node so you can probably see it better. And I'll isolate our little fish render over here. And I'll go to on so it updates the file information. And then I'll drop down a shuffle node. And unfortunately, the shuffle node kind of changed a little bit. So you might notice some new information or the new setup for the shuffle node and uh, later versions of Nuke. So with the new Nuke setup, you might notice something weird. The shuffle node has changed. Um, so shuffling out your new passes is gonna look and feel a little bit different, but that's okay. So if you go over here, you can kind of see your whole list of automatic kind of masks or layers uh, Nuke will suggest for you. But we're gonna go to new and this little uh, little thing will pop up and you can choose which channels you wanna grab. So in this particular case, it's already sensing from this particular image that there's a bunch of cool things inside it. So you can see that there's an SS blue pass that we selected, non-direct shadow, normal, disparity, great. Um, let's select one of these and we'll put them in there. So you wanna, if you're dealing with the SS passes, you wanna make sure that they're all in this kind of layer so you can grab them. Um, so in this, we have two blues. Hmm, I want my blue, red, and green, so. Thank you. And I think I also want my multi-passes as well in there. We'll go SS layer and it will kind of autofill for you as well. So that's kind of cool. And you can choose SS multiple or SS single as well. So there's a bunch of different things you can do. Um, it's, it's a really actually really good process. So 
we can click yes um we have to name some channels for the lair and so you you're gonna have to realize very quickly that you can't mess with nuke nuke will just tell you what you're doing wrong which is really really great then we can go there and there's nothing on this layer because I believe there's no information so uh, we're gonna create a new one or you can just grab them from here and I believe there should be some normal information yes there we go and we can see the normal for our fish now just kind of sitting there and then we could do direct non shadow pass right there which is great and that's pretty much it and yeah that's how you do render passes in Houdini and I hope you enjoyed this new and improved tutorial my name is Kate and I'll see you in the next video